So welcome back to Series 3, Episode 2 of the Women of Nottingham podcast. I am your host, Karen K. Barnes, and today I'm here with the lovely Lorelle Shadow, self-proclaimed accidental poet. She'll be sharing her story on how she got started writing poetry and how poetry has helped her. So we met briefly at the Young Women in Music Workshop. And you spoke about your experiences being a young black woman and your relationship with anxiety. Do you think topics such as these help your creative work or no? Um, so yes and no. I think the, the word help <laughs> is a bit ambiguous because I think it gives me a motivation to write, as I was explaining at the um the Young Women in Music workshop, it's kind of like the reason I started writing was not necessarily to be like, oh yeah, I'm a poet and I write poetry. It was like to shed light on mental health topics because I noticed that a lot of people were going through the same kind of struggle, but silently. So in that aspect, anxiety gives me a topic to write about and a, I guess it's a mode of connection with other individuals. Um, But at the very same time, it's also sometimes a hurdle to actually getting poetry out there and performing and recording and all of that kind of stuff. So I would say it's a yes and a no. (laughs) Okay. Um, Before you perform for an audience, how do you prepare or or stay calm? Um, (laughs) Do you know, interestingly, I like to call it the swan. Um, and it's kind of like on the surface when you see a swan they're probably like gliding by gracefully and everything feels nice and calm and it just seems like they're chilling and then if you actually looked under the water they're like paddling like crazy staying over water Um, so personally I can't say that I have perfected yet that oh everything's calm Um, but at the same time One of the things that's helped me, because I did struggle a lot, to be honest, before with kind of coming over that anxious feeling and I'm going to get on stage. And like, even when you know, like there's two performers in front of you, I would be getting all nervous and overwhelmed and you can feel the blood rushing through your body. Um, And so one of the things that helped was I read something that was basically saying that your body doesn't know the difference between Um, anxiety and excitement it's kind of the same physical release that you get so every time I'm like excitement not anxiety excitement not anxiety so that's one of the modes that I use um but another um, way in which I used to get in my own way a lot was because I was just looking at it as oh I'm going out there I'm reading this poetry this is just like life and then I would get positive responses from that so then when people would be like oh can you headline here or can you take this opportunity I would kind of be like well what do they see in me what do they want to show up and like that would kind of get me in my own head spin if that makes sense yeah um and so what I did was kind of started to trust that I have my own essence and it's not something that, oh, I need to kind of come as this person on level 10 and be an amazing revoche all day, but actually just I'm here because people want me here as who I am um, and just trusting in that feeling. Yeah, I think so, yeah. that's beautiful. I think, because I feel for anxiety too, but... Um... I feel like, and, and that's a, it's a common mindset to have where you think nobody else is, is going through the same thing as you or nobody else has felt that way. So I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm by myself a lot of the times. And even simple things like um, coming to work or going on the bus, coming to work, or going when I was in high school, going on the bus, going to school, I used to always feel so... Nauseous, nauseous and yeah. nauseous. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And, and, <laughs> yeah, and, it's, and, and I don't even know why. I think, well, I know why, but like it was, it was hard to overcome that, and it's still hard for me in, in overcoming those those days sometimes. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, thank you for sharing that. I personally believe that's one of the interesting things is that. 
when you're doing something like I am and like you're getting certain features and stuff like that it people kind of then assume oh you must be past that now you wrote a poem about that a year ago so you must be good now um and I think that the reality is that we kind of we can get into this place of remembering and yes I feel amazing today I'm going to conquer the world and the next day you can feel a bit like well what is the meaning of life do you know what I mean yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like it's such a normal experience for, experience for us to have those highs and lows um the thing that I've noticed with myself when it comes to anxiety is just how compassionate I can be to myself at that time if that makes sense yeah. um so it's not necessarily saying, oh, well, I shouldn't be anxious. And I know that there's no reason to be, but actually I feel anxious and that's OK. I can still accept myself in this moment. And I think that is the hardest thing rather than beating myself up and being like, you shouldn't feel this way. And you know that there's nothing to be worried about and stuff like that, because that creates tension within myself, if that makes sense. Yeah, I understand you. Yeah, and I think that's important. Sorry, no, I was going to no, no, no. No, 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 no. I was gonna say I think that's important with um, being cautious of how you speak to yourself, learning and um, learning how to parent yourself, which actually leads me into my next question. With loving yourself, I think it's something we have to keep working on. Absolutely. In the sense, in the sense that it isn't something we acquire in, in just one day. We have to continue and nurture ourselves. You struggle with anxiety like I do, and with that comes a lack of confidence. How how did you gain the confidence and belief in yourself in writing and performing poetry? Um, I always call myself an accidental poet in this like for this very reason, and it's because I can't say that I was as conscious as I can't say that I was as conscious as I don't know how to, okay, I can't say that I intentionally stepped into, um, to go into performing, so I've seen people that have never gone on stage before, and then they're kind of like, oh, there's an event coming up, I'm going to perform, and all the anxiety around, like, the build-up to that, and, like, the overthinking about those kinds of things, so um, as I was explaining at Young Women in Music, the way in which I got into the journey was just more, let me write to get these feelings out, um, due to a terrible in, in well a death in the family and so when I went to the event it was more let me watch and then it was kind of put on my toes in that moment and I think it was literally just the question between do I do it and kind of maybe fail and people might laugh and what's the worst that can happen or do I go home having not done this and taken this opportunity and kick myself for the rest of my life so I think that it was a bit easier for me getting into it because of the fact that there wasn't that much thought going into it and there wasn't a lot of preparation beforehand um and I think that I was lucky in that way because then I got a a good response from some of the work that I did and that kind of between that um and also the aspect of as I was saying earlier the more I spoke to people in private the more I realized that it's more common than a lot of people think and so it was kind of the the biggest hurdle like you say was feeling like no one else is going through this and I'm going to put myself on stage and be vulnerable so for me it was also a bit of an inner knowing that even though people are looking like they're living their best lives this needs to be heard for people to be able not like I need to be heard for people to hear I'm not like saying oh I'm amazing but at the same time I think that just someone actually speaking about their truth rather than making everything look shiny is going to be beneficial not just for me but for the generations to come and also help relieve for the older generations that didn't have a society where they could even have a conversation about mental health so I think it was yeah that that desire to help my community and the people that I care about and yeah my surroundings that made me say Ravel really get over yourself um it's not just about you basically no I I don't understand that I'm for me I think it's getting real now but for me I think it's um being 
selfless at times in appreciating being selfish. I feel like I give so much of my time and my energy to others and I'm so understanding of others and I just kind of want that for myself. Um, but then again, some people might say, Carol, you're so unforgiving, you're so um, unwilling to listen to other people's perspectives. And I think <laughs> I am, in a way, but with certain topics. With anxiety, I'm not. But with certain topics, I am. I need to definitely work on that. But, no, I, I get it. And I, and that's when when I saw you at the workshop, I was like, yes, I, can't, I so relate to you. And it's so hard, for, like, to me, it's so hard finding someone who I can relate to because I feel like I'm an alien sometimes. literally it's so it's not funny you should say that like ha funny but it's interesting that you should say that in the sense that that is literally one of the motivations that I have like I always say to stop people feeling like they're just like an alien from out of space and that to normalize the experience of other individuals but like I'm definitely with you and I hear you um and that kind of for me my in my own journey that has contributed to where I am now is the fact that I think that from a young age I was that person that people would come to to talk to to offload on all of that stuff um and it's like in an unofficial sense I was having conversations with people even probably before my full understanding of what was going on but just having that empathy and having that space for people um, and being able to hold that space and it's only recently because I think as well as a black woman um, I was actually in a counselling session talking about this and like, as I said it, I felt like this essence of the ancestors just like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> literally just in saying that it's such a radical act for a black woman to be able to say, I want to be nurtured too. Like I don't have to be the one all the time that's, because I was saying that I feel like we are the only race where people look at us and see our struggle and like build it into this like line of strong black woman. Like, I don't want to be strong all the time. I don't want to have to be the one that's carrying the weight of all of this stuff and all the knowledge and all the teaching and the nurturing all the time. And I think that part of this journey for myself is exploring that and actually taking that space of being able to be vulnerable and not feel ashamed for that and not feel like, less if if you know what I mean and actually say well no like I deserve this and I am able to create a situation where I don't have to always be the strong one um so I definitely resonate with what you're saying yeah I think that's so important and I think that's so important for black women especially because nobody else can understand what we go through other than us and I feel like a lot of our time a lot of the times our pain is dismissed and there are times where the strong black woman archetype doesn't help it hasn't helped and I think it's important especially yes to explore and and to explore the softer more feminine sides of black women because we are we caught and we cry and we bleed just like everybody else and we feel pain just like everybody else so that's really interesting because these topics like I love talking about this because I want like, and it's like people say, Carrie, you can't change the world. You shouldn't always have like this big burden in your shoulders. I'm like, dude, if I can't have my I'm going to try. But then exactly. again, it's, 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 also, it's also not my, like I'm only one person. And that's what I need to remember is that there yeah. are other people who can help as well. So, but yeah. Definitely. So, um, I think even in the, sorry. No, I was going to say thank you for sharing that with the whole black woman, um, whole strong black woman stereotype. I think that's important to explore that and challenge that. Thank you. No, most definitely. Like, um, it's a it's a pleasure. I was, I was going to say something, and <laughs> it um, slipped my mind. Um, yeah, it's absolutely gone. I'm, I'm apology. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's my fault anyway. No, no, no. Um. Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna because you know sometimes the more you try and reach for something, the more it runs away from you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was it. It was just about what you were saying about like society and like not being able to change the world and stuff like that. And I think that again, interestingly, I was having this conversation um, with my counselor, and I was like, I'm I don't believe that I'm trying to just be like 
no, this is not like everyone needs to change and I'm going to be a superhero and do and do all of these things. But even in my poetry, that was another thing that kept me going when we go back to confidence. I remember speaking to my mum and she just, she was just saying that if you can touch one person, if you can allow one individual to think differently with one with a poem that you've put out there with something that you you've done, then is that not being the change that you want to see? Um, and so now before, instead of like me being like, oh, I need to like help this and change this and remedy that in society. It's more about for me, I've, I've tried to lower it to if there's one person that is struck by that. I've helped society in more ways than I could of by not speaking out, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I think that there's definitely a power in that and not kind of because definitely, especially anxiety, depression, all of those kinds of things. But when you're then looking at the world and we're just seeing all this destruction and, and stuff like that and just the evils in the world, it can be all encompassing it can feel very very like a very heavy burden um which can kind of stop us from then spreading that joy and that love in the world so I think that definitely for me I found it a challenge at times to have that balance between there is still good in the world and then looking around and being like but look things need to be sorted um so I absolutely relate with you in terms of that as well yeah, no, I think I think it's important and I would love to challenge that more because it just I, I feel like <laughs> I know I go again with trying to change the whole world. I feel like <laughs> black women especially we just need a little more extra support, a little more extra love because we've been we've been dismissed for so long and it's, yes. it's tiring. So yeah. Definitely. Um, no problem. You wrote and designed your own poetry zone and adversity and understanding and alignment, continuous journey of self actualization. Was, was there any hesitancy in creating the book? And how did you start your own journey of enlightenment? Um, there wasn't hesitancy because at the time, actually, we had got funding, uh, me and a collective, I was a new associate for a theatre company um, called, excuse me, <laughs> called New okay. Perspectives. And um, we basically applied for ACE, um, ACE funding to put on like our own show because it's a theatre company. So people did their own productions. So naturally coming from a background of being a poet, I was like, ah, what can I do? So I decided to look through, because one of the things I noticed about my poems is that I can write a poem now and it can come from one angle or I can write it and it's kind of like a question and then two months later I've written a poem and it's like answered the first poem's question without being connected if that makes sense yeah. so in a way they weave their own stories and so what I did like because I think we only had like a month to get things together and I was like I panicked a bit and I was like let me look at this work and see what journey I can kind of cre not create but to see kind of what journey I'm embodying with all these pieces and it I kind of fit them together like a jigsaw and that went on to be like the one woman poetry show and then in that, I had an idea to, why not create this zine? And then I can launch the zine at the time when I do the One Woman Poetry Show. So literally, I had like two weeks. And being as though I already had like a vague map of what I wanted to say, because the show itself was called Adver um, Adversity, Understanding, Enlightenment. And um, it just kind of showed the different cycles that you... I feel like continuously are going through, as we were saying just about some days are good, some days are bad, and it's all this cycle. Um, so in that sense, because I already had the poetry, it was just a case of weaving it together. Um, so it wasn't, I wasn't hesitant in that sense. Um, but I think I was already in a mindset of just like, you've got nothing to lose, just just try it and see what happens. Yeah. Um, in terms of my own in my own journey to enlightenment, um, it started out with a traumatic experience, like I think quite a few other people's enlightenment journeys. Um, 
start out on. And I think that also, if I'm honest, I believe that my parents and the and the way that they grew up and the things that they learned about and were into and stuff like that as well, I think it just led me to have a questioning mindset in the first place. And then also I believe that I was always that kid that people were like, you're too sensitive, you're too sensitive all the time and all of that. And I used to see it as a weakness. And it's only now in going back to what you were saying as well, that I believe that there are people that are born to be the visionaries of the world and to be the kind of people that see a reality outside of necessarily the some of the negative existences that we kind of have. And so I think that it allowed me to question my surroundings and question my own pain and be able to relate to other people's pain and stuff like that at the same time. So to be honest, I don't believe it had like a start start date or time. I feel like they were just so they were different components that came together. Um, but can I also add that I'm was so I'm re, I'm in like this BBC. Um, one extra poetry competition thing at the moment and one of the workshops that we did thank you like do you know interestingly my dad sent me the um the the entrant the entry or whatever like the post about it like six hours before the closing for now like final <laughs> hours and I was in Legoland with anxiety that's so madness too bad that's exactly. And then I was literally in Legoland with my daughter at the time. So I was just like, I'm just going to send a video I've got on my phone and see what happens. So I'm, I'm grateful to have gotten through the first round. Um, so, yeah, we had a series of workshops, basically. And one of the facilitators basically said, like, when you're thinking of your poem, where is it placed? And so we got like set, we got broken off into our like groups and there was like three of us. And we all ended up being like black girls in this group. And one of them had written about her existence basically just as a black woman and what it meant and like having to justify her existence in so many different ways and angles and stuff. And when we started to look at the idea of place and where the poem is placed, she struggled and we struggled. And in that process, like it came to me and I was like, this is actually really interesting because the things that she's talking about in terms of having that safe space, of having to not have to justify her existence, etc. Because the things that she's talking about don't actually exist on this earth, there wasn't a place for a black woman to feel safe other than in our imaginations or in a visionary future, if that makes sense. Yeah. So when you kind of, just what you were saying about saving the world and kind of trying to forge new paths and create spaces for us that aren't there it is sometimes hard and it does feel a bit ethereal sometimes because that isn't actually in our society it's not within our societal structure and so I do believe even for us to be in a place of well-being there is an essence of having to dream and having to imagine that because it doesn't actually exist no that is you see, I think like you're just dropping gems right now. <laughs> and are you are you a water sign? Uh, um, yes, I think I'm a Libra. Yeah. Air sign, because you're going to be very much water sign energy. Oh, <laughs> by the way. But I resonate with all that you just said right there. <laughs> but it's but so you know. interesting because it's not something that you think of until you realise that you... It's, it doesn't actually exist, which it speaks of a sad existence of yeah. where we're at at the moment, but it's re real for us, isn't it? Yeah. How has poetry and writing poetry helped your healing? Helped my what, sorry? Your healing. Um, a lot of different ways that I wouldn't have expected. Um it's helped me to so like one of the like my company under my business is validate your voice and 
that is one thing that I've always wanted to facilitate for others but it's one thing that has also helped me because naturally with every well the majority of the pieces that I write it speaks about my experience or the experience of people around me and so to get a response um, and to for people to kind of come and say the profound things to me that they do it's always a mutual exchange. I've never looked at it as I'm a creator and I'm giving this to you. Like it's always been a mutual exchange because naturally as much as I can put something out there that affirms someone else's experience, them coming back to me and letting me know how it made them feel actually normalizes and affirms my experience. So I think that the confidence just to the confidence to accept myself as I am. Um, I can't say that I'm fully there yet, but along the journey, I think it's something that's helped me to see worth in myself. Um, because sometimes I look around and I think, oh, I've just paid for that. And that's literally just from my words, like from my experience, not from me putting on a hat or being this person or doing this job, but actually just from speaking of my own experiences, which blows me away sometimes if I'm honest um also on the other side I know I spoke a bit in the workshop about it there there has been a lot of people that then have come to me and haven't approached me in my worth if that makes sense um so because they've not necessarily come at me that way I had to find really early kind of to put boundaries in place not to necessarily say yes to every experience just because people want you to be there just because you're wanted and I guess that these experiences even though it's in the the um it's in like the the poet from the poetry side at the very same time these are for me have been lessons about life in about standing in my own truth because I think even before poetry I did speak to certain people about the way that I felt and I got more responses of this is life this is the way it is blah 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 so to actually stand in my truth and to kind of be in a position where I've got beautiful ladies like yourself saying can I interview you like (laughs) it just shows and it's an affirmation of my own journey um seeing my own self-worth having the confidence to like I say get on a stage and I think that even with that and when I started and got on that first stage it was more of an acceptance of myself like I was saying it's not necessarily me saying well I'm not nervous I'm not anxious so now I can do it it's more saying I am nervous I am anxious I'm sweating crazily but I'm still worthy and I'm still going to show up and I'm still going to do this so the affirmation for myself um being able to take my daughter on stage and just showing her from a young age that she is also worthy she has a voice um And teaching her about her emotions and stuff like that as well. It's all, there's been such a big, a plethora of things that have come from poetry, which when I started out, I would have never expected. Um, So yeah, I hope that answers your question. (laughs) No, this has been amazing that you dropped gems, gems upon (laughs) gems. But I want to thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your story. It's been amazing. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. And I just want to say to you that it is also inspirational for you, like as you say, with the things that you navigate as well, for you to even put yourself in a position to do a podcast, to be kind of aspiring to do like do poetry and learning about these and work going to workshops and stuff like that, because I feel like that's where it starts. And a lot of people think you have to go and do these big, amazing, shiny things. Um to make it and I feel like it's just these steps that we do that we take for granted sometimes that show our determination and you know what I mean and and the worth and the value that we have so please 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 continue to follow whatever it is that you want to do because you yourself are an amazing human being so thank you so much for taking the time to interview me thank you (laughs) okay see you later